On this edition of the Mets Prospect Profiles, we take a look at a pitcher who can serve as some rotation depth during the 2023 season for the New York Mets. Let's talk about it. And well, 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 welcome back to New York Sports Wicker Media. I'm Watsu K99. Thank you as always for taking the time to watch these videos. If you enjoy what you're watching and you're brand new, welcome aboard. Please like and subscribe. If you're returning, it's great to have you back. Okay, so let's talk about our next Mets prospect that we're going to take a look at today. It's not a pitcher who has the highest upside of anybody in the system by any stretch, but he could be considered a major league ready pitcher. It's the number 15th ranked prospect in the Mets system, and it's Jose Buto. Jose Buto, six foot one, 200 pounds. Now, this is a little bit of an older prospect. He's been with the Mets for a little while. Uh, he signed with the Mets in June of 2017 from Venezuela. He's going to turn 25 years old very soon. Uh, actually, in March, he will turn 25. So there, we're going to talk about him because I think there's a good chance that he is going to spend some time in the major leagues this season. So let's talk about his uh, history. So after being signed from out of Venezuela, he made his debut uh, in the minor leagues that season in 2017. He posted a 1.44 ERA in 50 innings pitched, allowed 48 hits, walked 9, and struck out 41. Then in 2018, he was assigned to the Kingsport Mets, and he pitched 32 innings over 6 starts, did pretty well, 1.93 ERA, and got a promotion up to Brooklyn in July to pitch with the Cyclones. He stayed there for the rest of the season. Didn't go as well in Brooklyn for him. His ERA was over 6, 6.11 in 28 innings, allowed 31 hits, 11 walks. He struck out 24. So then came 2019, got promoted to the Columbia Fireflies, spent the whole season there, did pretty well. 3.62 ERA, uh, 100 hits allowed, 109 strikeouts, 31 walks. So he was working his way steadily up the ladder. Not putting up like lights out numbers, but you know, serving as a, as a good starting pitcher. Now he may have reached double A Binghamton in 2020, but... There was a pandemic again. Uh, so on he went all we went to 2021 and he returned to Brooklyn. So by 2021, Brooklyn was now the Mets high A affiliate you know, because the minor leagues had been uh, you know reduced a little bit. And in 58 innings, did a, did a little bit better than he had previously. You know, a 4.3 ERA, 51 hits allowed, 15 walks, 60 strikeouts. Now, his work was good enough, according to the Mets brass, to earn him a promotion to double-A Binghamton. Now, in 40 innings in Binghamton, did much better. 3.12 ERA uh, with 33 hits, 9 walks, 50 strikeouts. So if we look at the overall season for 2021, he pitched 98 innings, had a 3.83 ERA, 84 hits, 24 walks, and 110 strikeouts. So then came this past season, 2022, started the season with Binghamton, uh, posted an even uh, four ERA, and finally in August, he got a promotion to Syracuse. He finally got to AAA. It took him quite a few years, but he did get to AAA. And he didn't stay in Syracuse very long. He made two starts, and then he got promoted to the New York Mets, to the Major League franchise. So he had to pitch as a spot starter in Citizens Bank Park against the Philadelphia Phillies on August 21st. At the time, Carlos Carrasco and Taiwan Walker were both injured. So the Mets called up Jose Buto, who had been in the, you know, the system for five years, but had only pitched above double A twice. And uh, that performance mm, ooh, did not go very well. He gave up seven earned runs in four innings against a very good Philadelphia lineup. Uh, the Mets did come back and win that game. It was, If you may remember, it was a Sunday afternoon game where the Mets had a huge rally. Mark Hanna had his, probably his best game of the season with two home runs. 
He was option, but Budo was optioned back down to Syracuse and never heard from again, but he did finish the year pretty strong. If you look at his minor league stats only, for 2022, he pitched 129 innings. This is between Binghamton and Syracuse. He had a 3.56 ERA, 112 hits allowed, 44 walks, and 138 strikeouts. So I know I went through a whole lot of stats there. Let's talk a little bit about his scouting report and what kind of pitcher Jose Buto is. So, so he throws some sort of a three-quarters arm slot. You know, he likes to do the drop and drive uh, sort of motion. Very smooth mechanics, very easy to repeat. Not a lot of herky-jerky motions. So one of the things that Budo does do well, he can use all four uh, quadrants of the strike zone. He can put a pitch where he needs to. He doesn't always hit the spots perfectly. I'm not saying he's Greg Maddox by any stretch, but he can locate well enough. So early in his career, Budo's fastball was not very hard. It, he only threw maybe in the low 90s at best. But since 2021, he realized he had to up his game if he was ever going to get past, you know, double A. So he added some muscle mass to his frame. He increased the velocity of his pitch, and now it sits in the mid-90s. Now, it's not an overpowering fastball. It doesn't have a ton of movement, so he has to really locate well or he's going to get hit hard. His go-to pitch is the changeup. Now that is one of the better uh, off-speed pitches in the Mets minor league system. Currently, it sits in the low to mid 80s, which gets, so that's about a 10 or so uh, mile per hour differential from the fastball. You know, you usually want at least 10 miles an hour of difference between a fastball and a changeup because you want it, uh, you want the motion to come out looking similar to the batter. But then the only real difference that a batter can detect is the speed of the pitch. It's all about the deception there. So it has this late tumbling action. It pairs well with his fastball. And uh, you know, Budu is able to throw it for strikes well down and in under the zone. So it has a tendency to really fool pitch uh, batters because the pitch tends to disappear. It's very effective against lefties in particular. A little bit less effective against righties. So if Budo is ever going to make it, in the big leagues. Even as a back of the rotation starter, he needs that third pitch. Otherwise, he's probably going to be no more than maybe a long reliever as a two-pitch pitcher. He is trying to develop his curveball. Now, the curveball, when it's working, has that 12 to 6 sort of break on it. Now, when he doesn't have the feel for it, it's a little bit looser, it's a little bit more slurvy, and it comes in as an angle as opposed to over the top like this, okay? So, Budo likes to throw that fastball about half the time, followed by the curveball and changeup, and the changeup, he seems to like to save that for strikeouts. That becomes like really his out pitch. But if he's going to be a starter, his fastball is not good enough where he can only use two pitches to make it work. So he's got to develop that third pitch or it's just not going to work out for him uh, probably past Syracuse, in, in my opinion. So what does the future really hold for Jose Budo? Well, he's got a lot of arms in front of him uh, on the Major League roster. He may be around kind of like where Tyler McGill was two years ago, kind of like a name kind of bubbling under the surface who could, you know, fit in if there's enough injuries or if, you know, the Mets just need uh, an extra starter for a double header or something like that. This is one reason I've been arguing for the Mets to have a six-man rotation because think about it. Max Scherzer and Justin Verlander are both advanced in age. Kodai Senga is used to having extra rest pitching in Japan. You know, Carlos Carrasco is a little bit older. Jose Quintana is a little bit older. So to me, it just makes a lot more sense to have a six-man rotation. And then in terms of rotation depth, you have David Peterson, you have Tyler McGill, you have Joey Lacasey, you have Alicia Hernandez, who I thought would be a long reliever, but from all accounts, it sounds like the Mets want to use him as a starting pitcher. Budo is behind all of them at this point. So I expect him in Syracuse for the majority of the season. I expect him to be the one or two starter. You know, he doesn't have a very high ceiling, but he is necessary depth if absolutely needed. And I think best case, maybe he could be a decent back of the rotation starter, but hopefully this is not a pitcher that you have to rely on. If he can develop that third pitch, if he can have a whole season in AAA and become a very reliable starter, well, it stands to reason, maybe he can help out uh, the New York Mets at some point this season. All right, well, those are my thoughts on Jose Budo. I would like to hear yours as well. Is this a pitcher that, uh, you know, not we're not going to base it off just one start in Philadelphia. We're not going to do that. But is this a pitcher that you think could actually help the Mets 
on the major league level at some point this season? Or is he just a minor league piece for uh, the duration of his career? Thanks everybody for watching. I'll be back uh, very shortly with another Mets prospect profile. You know, I think it's I think we should save the best for last. Hmm, who could that possibly be? Thanks again everybody for watching. I'll see you back here with more content from you know where. The wicker chair.